Hello there and welcome to Black Jackal Gaming. We're going to take a quick look at how to start a Warhammer 40,000 army as it can be a bit daunting to begin with. We'll look at the different places where you can pick up the models from, how to go about choosing which army to collect, if you need any of the 9th edition rules and the cost involved with starting armies. To start with it's always good to check the official web store for Games Workshop as they have the biggest range of models available and a half decent filtering system making it easier going through the different factions and unit types. There's other online retailers available which generally offer a discount in the range of 5-20% to but their stock is generally more limited and the website's not quite as easy to navigate around. It's generally a good idea to initially browse through the Games Workshop store and then purchase your models from elsewhere. There are generally official Warhammer stores in most major cities, especially in the developed western world. Outside of these stores there are plenty of local gaming stores that will have 40k stock and these locations are probably where you would play the majority of your games as they usually have gaming tables set up and gaming rooms linked to the store, making it easier to arrange games rather than dropping into a Warhammer store and hoping someone is available to play. It's usually a good thing to support your local gaming stores as they add to the community rather than major online stores. Going about choosing a starting faction can be a bit stressful as you don't want to run the risk of wasting your hard earned money. Have a browse through the website and get a feel for the armies that you like the look of as you will need to build and paint the models and if you aren't too fussed on them then it will be a long and slow process. You can always visit a Warhammer store and the staff will run through the different factions and help you get started. They're usually very friendly and knowledgeable about the game so will help you where they can. You can also watch some battle reports on YouTube. They give you a good feel for how armies operate on the game and you will find out if the army is a bit dull on the dull side for you to play. I would recommend Play On for shorter more casual videos. My favourite battle report channel is Tabletop Tactics as they have a good mix of armies, models and are very casually competitive so you get a good feel of how armies operate. Both those channels have very high production values, so they aren't jarring to watch like some other channels. Check out Hellstall Gaming as Mikey is a great character, highly amusing and always good to have people like that in the community. Please don't just google what is currently hot, as that would change often as the game updates about every 3 months and units can quickly go out of fashion, sometimes before you've even had the chance of finishing painting them. As well as this, 10th edition is around the corner so no one knows exactly what will be good. Now here's the scary part, spending all your money. The core start set to generally good value for money, they come with units from two different armies, contain the core rules and come with accessories such as dice and measuring sticks. If you have someone to split the box with, they're even better value for money. The combat patrol box set's really good value for money, generally saving you around 40% on the value of the models. Depending on the models in the box, you can often buy two of the same box sets to bolster your army. Space Marines have a lot of combat patrols and the majority of them can be used across all chapters even if they are painted differently on the box art. The only exception is the Space Wolves combat patrol as the Lieutenant has a wolf pelt draped over them. They also have a power axe which is not available for any other chapter, although this looks like it will change for 10th edition. If the box sets aren't to your liking then it's always good to pick up some core units for an army. You will want to look at the HQ section and choose a warlord to start your army. They all have captains available and they have various different names which is generally a solid starting HQ choice. After that look at the troop section and pick up a couple of options. For example if you're looking to be a space marine commander you can't really go wrong with picking up a box set of intercessors and a separate one for infiltrators. This would give you 10 intercessors and 10 models that can be built as either infiltrators or incursors. All three units currently have 5 to 10 models within, so you can potentially have 4 troop choices already. Once you've got your core battle line sorted, you want to then look at any recently released models as they won't be updated for many years. Some models are currently 20 years old and are due a refresh, so you may want to avoid any metal or fine cast models, or generally any models that look a bit old in comparison to the rest of the army. Iconic elite units are a good choice next. These are usually okay to great choices for armies across editions and have mostly been updated across their range. You will be looking at the likes of Space Marine Terminators, Eldar Howling Banshees and Astra Militarum Karskin. Finally we need a few other things to be able to use your army. 10th edition is around the corner so I wouldn't buy the core rulebook as it will be out of date in the next 2-3 to three months. Core rules should be available for free via a digital download on release, this is including any army rules for each army. Codexes will be obsolete, 
but may be useful if you pick up a second-hand copy for cheap as they have a lot of lore within them and the day sheets will be able to let you get a feel for the units as the way they operate will not change drastically for 10th edition. You will need plenty of d6 to play the game. I would suggest at least 30 dice as you will often need to roll a lot of dice. You will also need dice to count how much CP you have and most people use dice on units to keep a track of how many wounds are remaining for models such as tanks and monsters. You will need a tape measure to measure out movement and range. A standard tape measure will be fine for this. Your army needs to be able to get to the tabletop so you will need a way to carry them. There's plenty of options available, generally using battle form to help you protect your minis. There's also the option of adding magnets to the bases of your models and then putting a magnetic sheet in a plastic box so your middles can't go anywhere. Duncan Rhodes does a great tutorial for this and can be found on YouTube. Now the dreaded costs, there will be a lot of it. Just for the models alone, you're looking at spending in excess of 400 pound, so 450 US dollars for a 2000 point army. If you are currently upside down in the likes of Australia, be prepared to remortgage your house to get your hands on the models. Please be aware that some models are vastly more expensive than other armies. An Astra Militarum army is going to cost you in the range of 600 to 650 pounds just to get started, as they have a vast amount of models that you need to build and paint. A Knight Army on the other hand is going to come in at around £300, so $350. This hobby isn't cheap and we haven't even priced up the likes of paint, brushes, glue, dice, tape measures, carry cases, plastic clippers, hobby knives and a plethora of other accessories that you need to buy. There's plenty of second-hand models and kits that you can buy on eBay if you keep a lookout on them and there's some great deals to be found. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any comments then pop them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video then please hit the like button as it greatly helps the channel, hit the subscribe button to see any future Warhammer content. Take it easy and see you next time for more grim darkness from the 41st millennium.